chaps we've invited kirsty um in for a little monthly chin wag because the um ian can't be bothered by the sounds of it and he's really really busy oh that's mean no no he, he, Say what he, we want about him he's not here steve it's all right uh, exactly. <laughs> he'll, he'll watch he'll watch it he'll watch it a couple of the girls, all this stuff. <laughs> but he, he's just um it's a prime example isn't it we, we all do the whole thing of don't be too busy don't burn the yoga don't burn the candles uh, I, I do. I still do it all the time. It's you, you've got to keep on top of it. But anyway, the topic of this one, what caught my eye, right? In Google News, because obviously being being a CEO of mental health charity, I like to keep myself tip top on the the world of mental health. And two headlines which are, which have snapped mits, snapped, clicked. What, what what am I trying to say? Slapped you in the face. That'll do. That that'll do. We'll go with that. There's two, there's, <laughs> There's there's that there's two on here. Just in Google News, mental health, a couple of articles which is less than ten minutes old. Um, first one is GB News. Um, Gen Z found to be costing the UK economy one point hundred thirty eight billion pounds per year. I mean, hundred thirty eight billion. This is GB News. I don't know whether. Oh well, added, okay. Well, I don't know if Taylor Pitt, it's 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 probably a tenner then. No, probably. And then the other one, yet again, <laughs> take it with a pinch of salt because it is the Daily Mail. Gen, um, Gen Z employees miss a day's work a week due to mental health concerns. I haven't read these articles, but it's we're probably going to end up getting messages for the next two or three days, aren't we? Can we help out and all this kind of stuff? But there's two things what concerns it. The main thing is Gen Z. Kirsty, what's Gen Z again? Oh, age is like between 12 and 27 or something like that. So it's okay, that. So 12 year olds don't work exactly and i don't think regular paper round counts so so that whole jane c that whole gen z brand or whatever whatever you want to call it that concerns me really because we're a mental mental health charity mm. i'd say most of our audience are the the working class blokes probably 35 upwards would you agree with that steve yeah i don't necessarily think working class because i think you know the thought of suicide and mental health issues can affect anybody at any time it doesn't matter what class you are it makes no difference really no no i, I guess I'm, I'm just going by what uh, like our followers our followers yeah po quite possibly yeah uh, I, i'd say that but the many many conversations that I, I, i've had i don't think any of them if i just pick on kirsty's age bracket of what what is gen z all of them have use the lines you know i've had the shits and and i've lost my keys i can't come to work when it's actually to do with their mental health and i've said and, I, and i've said this since day one like if people start training all of their team just to be more aware about mental health i don't want to say sod off the mental health first aiders i just think the mental health first aider term terminology certificate from what i've seen is Kirsty, you're in the you're in the, you're I know you're in that industry, but from what I've seen as an outsider, most of it, I'm making a figures up. Let's say 60, 70% of it are people who have done it who don't really want to do it. The boss said you're going on to this course. It's a tick boxing, tick tick yeah, no, box exercise. Like. And then yeah. the, the the other bit, the smaller bit is what I see, and they're 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 often a bit of a pain in the ass for us. Not so much now, but they were the ones who I know what you're gonna say. I know exactly what you're gonna say. Go on. No, go on, go on. The ones that think they know everything. Yes, absolutely. Yes, I already, yep. I, I totally, I had this conversation this morning, so I totally get it. Yeah, no, and, and it drives me nuts. They're normally ones who are like, you should stop telling me people to man up. We're not, we've never once told people to man up. And those people that actually are like that are the ones that want to give advice rather than the ones that just want to listen. And yeah, that's what no. I find. No, uh, exactly that. And yet again, I think there is a time, there is a time and place for a, a mental health first aid. I, I really do, but only if that person is willing to do it, and probably if they're the right person to do that job as well. Yeah, it's because, fun. I, I personally think. But my also concern is, is I've spoken to loads of them, the good ones over over the three four years I've been doing this. No one looks after the mental health first aiders. Yeah, no, you're right. And I think I think we I think we've we're just in a big tick tick boxing circle, and but for me I'm just like that article here. Yet again, I haven't read it. I'm only reading the head the the headlines. Gen Z this and it's Daily Mail, so it's probably a load of bollocks as well. But Gen Z employees miss a day's a day's work. I know that's well that that's on the average a week. You said a, a day's that's work. That's a week. That's a week in the UK, which is if we mix that with the that's other article, which is 138 billion pounds. 
Yeah, that's a lot of money. I mean, I do see the stats that float around, like, you know, one in five people have a day off a week with stress. I see that yeah. stuff floating around, but I, I wouldn't actually put that into a bracket of being that generation, if that makes sense. From what I, from my perspective, when I work with people, the generation of the younger generation that are coming up are very much in control of their work-life balance. A lot more than I'd say the millennials like us guys, you know, um, I think we were probably under that bracket where you just, got on with it whereas now it's like well no they know that you know they're in they they want to have that balance they want to be able to hybrid work they want to be able to do this they want to have those boundaries i think they're a lot more in control so i actually don't agree with that to be fair i'd yeah, be very, I, I'm very surprised that it's that right do you know what i mean yeah no absolutely and, and the thing the thing about using this terminology millennials and gen z's and all this kind of stuff is we, we, everything seems to be about us and them yeah which is sad isn't it well, it, it is sad. It's like that thing that Sue's heard me say this so many, so many times now. So I apologise, mate. But so even when I've gone into schools, I'll also ask like three questions: Would you speak to a school? Would you speak to a teacher? Would you speak to your mate? Um, this is a, this is a good couple of thousand, probably three thousand students over three, three years. So I've spoken to a lot of kids or, or teens, and I'll always say like, Would you would you speak to a parent or somebody who lived with about mental health? And out of those thousands of kids, and we're not finished yet, two hands have gone up. Yeah, sad. And I think this cause it, and, and I think the reason is, is because of stuff like this, is the parents and millennials, which is our bracket, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. And and now we're 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 just we're just sanctioning the forties. You go over there, the men you go over there, the women go over there. It's just like just I think we're just causing a, such a fucking divide. People put them in boxes a lot, don't they? And I don't think it needs to be with with my kids. I try and encourage them to. Don't get me wrong. There'd be a bit more. Listen, you pick up on stuff anyway. It don't matter what age you are, does it? You can detect when someone's behaviour's changed or their mood's changed or anything. Well, like. you'd like you'd like to think you can. Well, you get what I mean. You t especially yeah, my, yeah, no, I, I do can get pick it, yeah. up when they're they've come home and they've had a crappy day. Do you know what I mean? I can pick yeah. up on certain things because you know your kids. Yeah. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. You yeah. understand them, but I'd like to think my daughter would be my my daughters would be more open to communicate. But again, it's a hard thing again because they are girls as well. And I think they do communicate a little bit more, more than I know a lot of people have boys. Boys that don't communicate. For sure. Do I put that into a box? It's a hard thing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think you're right. I think the gen the generations and the, the genders and things like that, I don't think it needs to be I don't think it needs to be boxed into anything, really. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, again, I just think it, it, it's it's just it's not like the whole COVID thing again. I, I remember when schools were being blamed, blamed, um, being blamed as being like the super spreaders and all this kind of stuff. And actually, I don't think there's actually any scientific proof of that at all. Well, they're just I, giving them a bit of a stigma, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> like, no, absolutely. Um, spreaders. Yeah, exactly that. So I, I just think like the younger people, I think you, you got to bear in mind, I remember when my, my, my eldest, he moved up to school, he missed like that first six months of moving up to a secondary school. And then when he did, when he did go, but when he did start to get a secondary school, basically he had to sit in a giant condom. Yeah, that's what I mean. Do, do you know what I mean? Like play group was standing on a, it, it, it made, it's, it's like talking about career, but like I remember going outside, they, were, they, they had like spray painted yellow squares where they could literally just stand there. And they went, in his mental... It, so, it kept him in a bubble, didn't it, as such? Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just walking around in, like, giant condoms. It's just, it's just, it's just absolutely stupid. And that, so... I, do, I don't really know what the topic is, but that... that, that But yeah, they're, they're both very, very worrying statistics, if they're to be believed. Old, I think you I think you'll agree. 38, 138 billion a year, that Gen yeah. Z. I mean, for me... That just straight away puts on a negative spin on it. That don't hire people who are Gen Z then because they're going to cost you this much money with their mental health. Yeah, That's not. We, this is the younger generation coming up. We should be supporting them in the right areas. If that's the case, then what's causing <clears> that then? Yeah, it's obviously so, been some kind of triggers. So if I can flip it, and I, I think you just jog my jog my memory, but you think so. Say for example, as somebody who's the, who's an employer myself. Mm -hmm. And I have to be I have to be honest here. Yeah, if I just as an employer, let, let's just sort off the mental health campaign as CEO blah, blah, blah. as an employer, I'll be going, right, well, okay. So this Gen Z, let's presume that Gen Z is 18, 19, 18, 18 years old. Yeah, yeah, of course. Which, yeah. But let, let let let's pretend they're on minimum wage legally, which mm -hmm. is I think at the minute is ten is ten pounds forty two, but ten pounds forty two to 
ten pound forty two per hour. I know in April the 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 minimum wage is going up. Oh, over, yeah, yeah, I think it's going up to like eleven o'clock. I think there's a point coming here, so just bear with me. Read right between the lines. So straight away, I, I think you're right. As an employer, i be like, okay, well, if this person is going to be calling in sick once a week, oh, I might as well just get someone who's twenty two. Pay a little bit more money, and I'm not going to get these problems. No, exactly that. And as an employer, like if if I if I if I get uh, my member of staff calling in sick, which she has done, it happens. She's a lone mum, and all this stuff. Life happens. I then have to I have to then get out of bed and come in work early and, mm. and take over, which then puts me behind with everything else. So, so I, I think I think I think you're right. I think that would make me question whether I want to give a Gen Z a job. Which is not good in today's environment, isn't it? When we're encouraging, you know, you want to get people out to work. You want to give people opportunities. That's not yeah. encouraging, I don't think. If anything, like Steve said, it's worrying. It's worrying. That 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 definitely worries yeah. me. That's a huge amount of money. Yeah. But on the other hand, let, let, let's play both cards here if, if I can. Steve, you're very quiet today, by the way. But on the, uh, let, let's... No, I'm listening. No, it's... it's, it's... Well, cool. let, Carry on. Let, let, let's flip it on, on ahead. It's just, I, I guess, like, we're, we're in that world. Or I'll speak for myself. Even, and Steve's seen me, even when I'm not massive, the press and completely burn out, I will keep going. Mm. I, in, until I've fixed it or whatever else. And, and Steve's winched at me before over that kind of stuff. Actually, maybe the the Gen Z, here we are, we're, talk, we're doing it now. But even not the Gen Z, like you said, they're a bit more of just like, no. And they don't feel guilty for it. No, I, they don't. So, so may, maybe we maybe should have read a bit more into this, well, but this whole this whole thing's to a discussion, to spark, a spark discussion as well. But maybe there, maybe there is a bit of truth in that. I think we could take a lot of um, inspiration from the younger generation in regards to their boundaries and stuff. A hundred percent. I think we can, you know, they're a little bit more open to talking, which is probably a lot. Our generation probably wasn't, but no. yeah, you're right. It just shows you from perspective, you can read an opening liner and grab a, uh, an opinion from that. And it may not have been the case, you know, but yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think we, we probably do. Then is that, is that a generation thing though? Would you say that we are brought up in a diff from different, in different environments maybe yeah or, i think i think completely i, I think, you I know, think actually, let me let me give an example I, I, um nearly said his name i don't say i don't say my kids names on here but my my, my oldest one the 15 year old he he delivers like these catalog you know them like community catalog crap yeah, yeah, yeah. On, you know the ones what no one really reads but he he he, he, he does like he does like a round of whatever else and he doesn't get paid a lot and i went to him i was like when, when he was like looking at it I was like, mate, you can just come and work with me and earn, earn the same money in like six hours uh, and whatever else. And I remember saying... But, but you're missing the point. You're What's completely it? missing the point there. I don't think I am, but go on. Yeah, you are, because he wants to go and work. I don't know what I was going to say, and, but go on. No, but no, but but I, I think you're wrong in what you're, in what you're about to say to him, okay. which is you can come and work for me and earn that amount of money in less time. That's You're missing the point completely he's gone out to try and get himself a job and to try and get some work to get some money regardless of how much he earns and regardless of where he earns it and how he does that provided it's not illegal um yeah. you know he's doing his own shit in his own time and getting a reward for it now you may continue now you made me feel like a dick <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time, but it sure as hell won't be the last either. No, no, it wouldn't be the first. But no, no, you, you, you're right, and I actually, I actually give him credit. And that's one thing what I, I always try and tell the boys. Well, like it's just like I'll always support and whatever else. But my my job as a dad, and I think I've said this before, my job as a dad is to make sure that those boys can survive in life. Where if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, they can carry on. Precisely. So if they're working for daddy on you know more money. And less hours, and father, so on and so father, on. Father Summers. They're father not Summers, yeah. Though, is they? Then, you know, then they're, they're, not they're, they're not independent, are they? They don't find out, you know, what to do in the real world. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I, and I didn't, I didn't think of the the eldest like that. So actually, that's quite that's quite a valid point and, and go to him. But I think what, what what I was trying to go with that one is maybe in our generation, we we were told just whatever job you can get, just get it, and then we just work your way up. Mm -hmm. You weren't then, a selective, was you? No, exactly no. that. But he, but even even not my son. I'm just like, well, why would you want to walk around for like, if that's going to take you like, 
a week to do all of that and you're going to get probably less than the money that I, I can pay you, pay you in this business. I'm just like, okay, so what's um, what's the laws on it? And then I'm, I'm educating my son about the laws. And I make sure you make sure you have this. And am I, am I making a point? I, I think. I'm, I think yeah. I, know, I get where you're coming from, and I think it's more of a uh, thing that we are as we grow, we obviously learn these things. But I remember working when I I, look, I remember being your son's age at 14, 15 and working jobs I was getting paid peanuts for. But like Steve said, I went and found that job. It was like our sense of achievement that I've got that job and I was doing it. Um, looking back now, I absolutely got fleece, mate. Like I would never yeah. encourage my kids to do that. But then I learned a lot in regard to my character. And I think just my work uh, um, ethic as such that I worked from a young age and it just taught me a load. So I totally get where you're both coming from. What did he say, Dan? Because I know that when I offer my kids work, they more or less just snort at me, mate. They're not interested in what I'm paying them. It's paint. They're, they're not interested. They don't even go. I want to go to work. Yeah. They, don't even, they don't even want to go to work. They're happily like, work for someone else for less money, but they don't want to work for me, and I'm willing to pay more. So, what, what was his response? Well, do, 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 do you know what? It's bloody genius, actually. Cheeky little fuck, but he, bloody <laughs> genius. So, 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 what he done is, is this round. This round should take him. This round should take him like two hours every day so let, let's call it like eight to ten hours depending on the weather yeah and he's he's now got it down to under four. Oh, mate he's mastered his craft <laughs> no no he has but do you know what he's done he gets me to give him a lift round do you know what my sister did this to my mum on a paper round no joke yeah. she did this till she was about 17 proper fleece my mum my mum was driving her car on these paper rounds it's costing her petrol my sister's getting it done in like she took on another two rounds in the same because she could and then, no, that's, that's what about, yeah. this is what I mean. She took on another two rounds, and then when Christmas bonuses come, kept them all. Didn't even offer my mum any petrol money. Yeah, no, she had a good at Christmas. No, exactly. No, it, it's genius, and 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 good on him. It made, made me laugh. So basically, yeah, it's been a couple of times where I literally because he, he's he's like analysed it. I mean, he's, he's a bit autistic as well, which, which is so, um, he's starting to take advantage of it. He was just he's worked out the walk from from the house to whatever bit of the road. That's the bit what takes along. The actual del delivering isn't that isn't that time consuming. So he'll get either me or his mum or wherever he can to basically <laughs> drive him there, leave him at the end of the street, and just run up and do it that way. It's genius. Yeah. So what you're offering him, Dad, that makes no perfect. Don't make no sense now, unless you're going to pay him more because he's doing it in half the time. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, exactly, uh, <laughs> exactly that and stuff like that. And I absolutely love it. But but I think that that's maybe this whole Gen Z thing is these articles here. Yet again, I haven't read them. There's my disclaimer. Looks like we should be blaming the, the the younger audience for basically our country, the UK miss UK economy missing 138 billion pounds. And then I and I'll read that and go, lazy fuckers. And I think that's what a lot of the misconception is around this generation, is that people feel they take advantage of it, do less for more. And like you've just said, it's a I think a lot of people have that opinion that it's the lazy generation. When really are they are they looking after their self better? Are they making sure they've got boundaries? There could be a lot of things behind it. You spot on what you said earlier. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I tell let's let's just have a quick skim. You two now, a quick minute. Let me just have a quick. Let me just have a quick skim read of this GB GB News one. I'm just just having a quick skim read on here. But do you not think? I mean, you know, you see here are so many people that leave uni, and they're 23 24 or whatever they've got 50 grand debt and they're flipping burgers in mcdonald's they've got a degree but they're flipping burgers in mcdonald's because they you know they can't they can't get the job that they really really need or the well, job you, that they really really it comes want down to an experience then doesn't it well they ain't gonna have experience because they've been in uni and sometimes it shows you that maybe I think a lot of people tend to not go to uni nowadays as well. Some of the younger generation coming up because they like having that hands on straight on. I think there's a lot more opportunities in this world, guys, where I think you can jump straight into good paying work to gain the experience. But I, but, but I, but I would, I, I completely agree with that. But I mm -hmm. think there's been a, I think there's been a gap in the middle. When I left school, you know, pretty much all of my mates and and we've all been, you know, moderately or or very successful. Um, you know, we all jumped straight into apprenticeships, um, work experience, um, and got paid for doing that. You know, we didn't spend, you know, three years at uni 
as seemingly doing like you know five hours work a week or I mean five hours of lectures a week and walking out with a massive great big debt so you know it comes comes down to the you know would I rather ex have somebody with experience or or letters after their name I don't give a toss how many letters you got after your name if you could do the job you could do the job so I think we're now headed back to that now because we've got proper apprenticeships back yeah. again you know, whereas in the middle, there was this big gap of, well, everybody's got to go to university. If you don't go to university, then you're nothing. But then you've got all these overqualified people doing menial jobs. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it doesn't uh, make any sense to me. Yeah, uh, I, I found a good little snippet in this. Uh, yet again, it's GB News. And I think that I think that's backed up what Kirsty um, said. Yeah, I could be wrong. Um, yeah, again, I've only skimmed read this. Part of this article here, this is GB News about basically um, the, the headline is Gen Z is basically costing 138 billion pounds a year. So it says on here, but um, it suggests that younger, younger staff experience mental health issues like tiredness and burnout at a higher rate with under 30s, under 30s, twice as likely to have depression as their older colleagues. But research in the past has shown that Gen, Gen Zers or Gen Zers are more keen to do something about it. They're significantly more likely to formally take sick days owning to, um, owning to owing to mental health. And almost a third have left or are planning to leave a job due to its impact on their mental health. Yeah, I've heard them stats. And, I, and that's the part I can see around what I was saying earlier is that I think they're just, the, the situation has always been there, guys, isn't it? It's just more openly spoken about now. Let's not beat around the bush. Everybody, it's the, the, what we experience in mental health now has, all, has always been there. But I think the stigma was there a lot more. Whereas I think now it's slowly shifting. I'm not saying it's fully shifting, but it shows slowly shifting. And I think people are more open now to say, look, I need a little bit of support here. Or, or look, you're still going to get people that are, taking the piss let's not be around the bush there we know well that. yeah that was yeah I mean, that was that was going to be my kind of underline you're still going to yeah. get people that say and claim they've got something here because they can and it's not proven do you know what i mean so i totally respect that yeah. but yeah. there are a lot more genuine people out there now who will just say look i'm under too much pressure i need a bit of day off and is that something that we can take for me it's like look when people are openly having these conversations then then there's an opportunity to find out what's going on and start putting things in place to to support that so that it can reduce them costs it, exactly exactly so it's how you know it's how companies and schools and employers cope with that situation you know if that's happening on a regular basis so mm. you know steve's always taking you know a day off a week because he's claiming he's burnt out and all the rest of it there's an issue there 100%. You know what I'm, I'm, and what is the issue? Is he not trained correctly, so he's struggling with the, you know, with the employment? Are we asking too much of him? Is there too many hours involved whereby he can't go and do other things? You know, or is he taking a piss? But, but at least if you if you sit down and have that conversation about it, hopefully then you can do something about it and get him back to working five days a week, which would save you a whole shitload of money. Exactly. And do you know what I think the next problem that we seem to find, guys, and this probably is a whole nother conversation and a whole nother day, then it falls down to the managers and what kind of managers approach have. Is it that yeah. they are, are them, if you manage someone correctly, like you've just said, you're asked the right questions <clears> and <throat> you'll get somewhere with that feedback that you're going to get. <clears throat> Some people are not, look, they're not trying to be people, people. And this is, <clears throat> it's, it's that, and that can cause more damage in itself because then it's that, how do we approach it? And before you realize that you've got more of a problem on your hands, because no one has, knows how to approach the situation, which creates that bit of a toxic culture there. And I think that's what the difference is in the generations today. They're not willing to put up with that. So yeah. look, I'm burnt out, I'm having a day off. Whereas me yeah. and you, like you've just said, would think of it as, right, okay, well, what's the problem here? Let's actually delve a little bit deeper. It's costing me as a company this amount. I need to be doing something about this. And yeah. I don't think a lot of companies have caught up with that mindset yet. I think they're getting there, but I think it's a, it needs to come away from the tick box because you can do so many more positive things without just tick boxing mental health first aid, like you said, which mm, I think is yeah. fabulous because I train it and I teach it, but I think it's not going to be the saviour for everything. No, it's not. No. People's skills is something that we need to enhance more on. We get that right. We can make a big difference in that in that way. Like yeah. like we've always done in, you know, in human nature, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That. Well, basically, in a nutshell, it's learn from our mistakes. Hundred percent, yeah. And I think I think we're in the we're in the. You're still drinking out of a, a Christmas cup, mate. I've been drinking out of this Christmas cup for about four years. Have you still got, <laughs> have you still got your tree up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I think you're right. I think you know. Yeah, I think we just need to do a little bit of 
I don't see it as a bad thing taking some inspiration from some of these younger generations. I know, I, I, Probably I agree. should have done that myself many moons ago, you know. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And I think any business owner, I think they do. This is why we do like that that are what I know you're speaking at it. Then I want to start on the point in the pen. I've got a habit of doing that. But it's just, it's just rather than get one person to be a mental health first aider who probably doesn't really want to do it. Or even worse, they probably really want to do it because then they can be the, the office therapist, which is not what it's all about. <laughs> Brain your whole team. <laughs> at, at least put half of your team on like a course of just being just being more aware. Yeah. That's that's exactly what it is. You don't even have to do like I, I speak to people now and I think, well, look, you can have like a power hour workshop, mate. You don't have to have two days with the training. As fantastic as it is, and you know, I do it for that reason, but you can have a power hour where you can call create so much awareness that and educate people in that hour a lot more than you're going to get with someone that doesn't want to be there for two days doing training. Yeah, completely right. And I think that, and I think that that hour is way more valuable probably than two days. It's because two, two, it? two days. Yeah. Because two days, I mean, we find it when we train up, um, you know, our customers in, in kind of the back end in, in um, content management systems, you know, if you spend a day doing it, they walk away with absolutely nothing Yeah, because they're so full. You know, it's ridiculous. So we kind of do ours. We break ours down into, you know, hour, hour and a half. So you learn what you're going to do. So what do you need to do? Right. Okay. So we'll then teach you what you need to do. You'll have other, you'll have other um, questions that come out of that. You know, how do I do this and how do I do that? But that's fine. We're there to help. But just bang it down into hours. So I think, I think, Kirsty, you bang on with that. You know, you go in there and absolutely that hour, bang. Gets the engagement, guys, and, and I think it creates that little bit more of a look. If I want to learn more, then there's opportunity to learn more. Like you just yeah. said, asking questions after, but in that one hour, is you've got someone fully engaged there. You know, doing twenty. I kind of teach mine in them hours, twenty minute pops, engage the audience, do another twenty minutes, engage the audience, because people listen, they get distracted, they lose focus. You, they do, yeah. And it and it is heavy subjects that we talk about, so you have to keep it quite light in that respect, you know. Yeah. But all this does anyway. I mean, for us. It, I've I built loads of resilience growing up from a lot of these experiences. And I think the Gen Z part, if they're looking after, what do they say? You've got to look after yourself or you can even look after anyone else. And maybe that's what they're doing. And we probably yep. didn't do enough of it. Hence why we're learning this stuff now when we're in our nearly 40 this year. But you know what I mean? I'm learning. I've learned loads these last few years, just the things that, to be fair, I probably should have took on a lot earlier, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. You're, you're, you not the, you're not the only one, uh, absolutely. So, but to be honest, if that if I'd have learned what I know now, probably 10, 15, 20 odd years ago, like, see, how long have I known you? About 10 years now, isn't it? It's a bloody long yeah, time. something like that, yeah, yeah. About, so, let's say like 15, 20 odd years ago, I don't think I would have started a charity. That's, that's what I'm saying. So all yeah. these experiences yeah. lead you in this direction, mate, didn't they? Exactly. Every single yeah. thing that happens in life is meant to happen for that reason, to you to learn from and, you know, you just take a lot on board. Absolutely. I'm a massive believer in that anyway. I know I wouldn't be yeah. doing what I was doing now had I not have experienced certain things in my life. And looking back, all right, they're not the most greatest things and they're very negative, but you just got to take a positive from it. And exactly. I think that's where I can take a lot from this generation growing up is that they do look at things a lot more positively, which is probably better than rather than looking for the negative, they're more focused on, you know, looking after their self, which is, yeah, which is a positive in itself. Isn't well, it's it? important. It's very mm. important. Yeah. That was a good video. Hey, it was spot good. On. We didn't even need Ian today. So I mean, no, we, we didn't need him. Um, I'm going to leave that bit in. Is that the same as a bit at the beginning? Just, just, <laughs> just, just, um, <laughs> just to follow a minute. He'll, he'll watch it. Like, oh, mean a... Street, a mile wide, man, you have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so no, it's all good. But no, I appreciate that. Let me hit the I'm a call button because this is one of those what could just keep going on and on and on and then we forget mm. it's actually a video. But Amy wants it.